Good mate, welcome to Tooks Talks. I'm glad to have you on. Thanks for having me. I know you've been nervous. <laughs> yeah. Tell so you don't like talking about yourself, so nah, nah. we'll see how you go. Um, oh, we'll start off just about your journey so far. Like We know you've worked at um, the Melbourne Rebels and Cricket Australia in the past and how that translate into working with the AFL, what have been the differences? And Yeah, I think it's, it's it was good actually experiencing different sports um, and seeing how they go about it because obviously cricket to rugby to AFL, completely different demand, so I think watching the cricketers go about it um, <coughs> compared to the big boppers in rugby and then compared to you lightweights in the AFL, sort of sort of all different and um, just their preparation was interesting, like from a skill-based game like cricket through to a, a physical game like we play AFL, so it's been what, good. What do you reckon between the three, who's got the, the more elite status? Uh, cricket is the best. Cricketers talk, they're, they're great talkers, great stories. Yeah. Um, you can sit there for hours talking to a cricketer as you blokes probably struggle in that department a bit. So. Well, we don't have to kill time <laughs> sitting on the, on the, on the you need to learn. You need to learn more though. <laughs> no, that's really good. Um, what are the, was coming to the AFL role from those, what do you reckon like some of the key differences between working say in the cricket and rugby? Because I know like you talked about then the space is different but um, what um, yeah, what probably you... obviously the amount of the amount of running we do in this sport compared to um, definitely compared to cricket, and then the amount of gym in rugby. Those boys are sort of 120 plus kilos um, doing some big weights, whereas probably the strength component in this sport isn't as important as it is when you're packing a scrum um, with you know seven other 150 <laughs> kilo gorillas. So yeah. yeah, that's probably the main difference. Main difference, yeah. Um, you're a bit of an athlete yourself. You like to talk about nah, the that athletic one. prowess, I mate. That one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done it. I know you. <clears throat> tell us about um, like your journey as a, a triathlete. I guess that's a that's a word. Like yeah, no, I was a, probably uh, I was a I was a big fat pear shaped footballer back in the day, and then tried to lose <laughs> a bit of weight, and then uh, got into running and triathlon, and then sort of really liked it, um, and then got sort of competitive at it. But I was always a bit of a battler. Um, and I think the why I love the power of the mind so much because my skill was not there, but my mind, my power of, in my mindset was pretty strong. So that sort of made up for my lack of talent um, doing triathlon. So yeah, did a lot of short course stuff and then did some long course stuff at the end and then wanted to salvage my marriage. So then stopped doing it, <laughs> started with you. <laughs> Tell us, because it's a pretty intensive program because I know the short course is, were you doing like Olympic distance yep, yep. ones to start with? So it's, yep. what's that, 1.5? Yep, 40 and 40K bike and then 10K run. Yeah. yeah, and then into a long ones with, which are like? Yeah, 4K swim, 180 bike and then a marathon, so. Stupid, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's> so <laughs> yeah. silly. What's the, uh, what was the comparisons between the two? Like how to, what made you want to go into like the long one? Because I know the short ones, they're not easy, but you know, there's. No, I, I always, I've just had this big, um, belief in testing your mind so I, I just wanted to test my mind to the absolute extremes and doing ridiculous distances like that um, stop being a physical barrier and more be a, a mental barrier so just yeah. like we talk about here like you know our bodies can do anything if we if we put our mind to it so that was more the challenge and to see what I could do yeah mentally yeah and you obviously ticked off probably well, I know it's on my bucket list, but um, to do a Hawaiian Iron then, yep. you finished that. Actually, you actually told me earlier, I didn't realise you had to qualify for the yeah, Hawaiian got, Ironman as well. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got a knock off too. So tell, yeah. us about, tell us about that. Yeah, I qualified in Port Macquarie, which is um, Australian Ironman. And uh, you had to, it's pretty tough qualifying actually when you're in the younger age groups. Um, and yeah, managed to get a spot. And then you sort of have to take the spot straight after the race. So after going through nine hours of hell, you have to actually confirm and submit another one um, a couple of months later. So did that um, and yeah, unbelievable experience. One of the best experiences of my life and leading up to that and then finishing the race and yeah, all the sacrifice that your family and your friends go through to get you there is probably the biggest pleasure out of it. Um, yeah. To see them um, after the race is pretty cool, yeah. Because you're putting in, you would have put in what, at least a year's worth of training luck intensive training to yeah a bit, bit over a year because i was trying to be i was trying to compete at a fairly high level so yeah. um i wasn't just trying to roll around in 12 hours i was trying to have a fair crack at it so um yeah a lot of time and effort and what did yeah. you end up going around in what was your i uh, went around in 925 so 
yeah. It's not, not bad, mate. Bad. Yeah, I, <laughs> That's not bad I, had a, I had a pretty poor run in the end, which was yeah. understandable in those conditions, but I wanted to do a little bit better, but yeah. I was glad to finish. Tell us about a few, mo- you would have had a few moments in that race, surely, because not everyone gets to go take their mind to that that area. I yeah, know, I was I a big, uh, in both races, I was a big crier, actually, so I just... <laughs> I'd cry a few times and have a few tears at a few different points and yep. get a bit weak mentally and then sort of give myself a few choice words and then <laughs> just battle on. Um, it's amazing what your mind goes through and what your body produces at really telling times in a race like that. Like it just gets, it's pretty scary. And, yep. um, but then, yeah, you get through it and your mind can do anything. The bike as well. I know the bike ride has, I've heard of it. There's the, because you go through the volcanic sections. Like, yep. what was that like? Was um, yeah, it was. Uh, it was crazy because the crosswinds are unbelievable coming off the ocean. So you, one minute you'd be on one side of the road and the next minute you you come through a, a cavity in the in the lava and then you're on the other side of the road um, and you just don't even feel yourself getting blown across there. So um, <laughs> crazy, crazy conditions, hot lava and then... Um, Do you burn uh, up from that? Do you get Yeah, locked? like sunburn, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and, you, and you sort of... You, you, um, your sunscreen and that just sweats off in the end. So it probably no surely idea. comes off in the water when you yeah, in the water as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Um, and now you started here as a uh, as a rehab manager. I don't know if many people know that, but now you've you know come into the high performance um, high performance manager. Tell us about that. what's the what's been the transition been like? Because um, no, I've loved it. I love coming to work. Um, I love this group, and I just want to see us do well. And uh, I just think we just need to keep. Uh, you know, working on the power of the mind, just like my experiences in, in triathlon. And um, I've loved seeing the growth over the last 12 months and the boys and from when we started to when we went to New Zealand and, and, and to now. So um, the transition's been pretty easy in terms of what I was doing with the rehab boys, but just on a bigger scale. Um, so, yeah. Have you found that doing the rehab and then rolling into, say, the high performance management, like, your scope for people that you have to look after and um, I don't know people that you have to manage is like really broadened and yeah like yeah the conversations channels. that you have with people are probably the hardest thing going home at night after having a million conversations with a lot of different people where in rehab it was pretty confined to obviously a small number of people um, but in my new role yeah there's lots of conversations and um, lots of communication that has to be done each day to make sure that you do your job to the best you can you can do it yeah so. did you always want to did you always want to do it because i feel like i don't know i didn't when you put your hand up to do it i know personally that wasn't like expected and then yeah. um yeah it was it was always something front yeah, of mind yeah. that you wanted to get to is yeah i always wanted to um try and develop and take a group of athletes um to their extremes and yeah. make them physically and mentally stronger so um i always knew i had it in me but yeah just when the time was right and i yeah stoked to obviously get that here yeah, and do you reckon like the most re- rewarding part of your job so far to date? Uh, the most rewarding part was uh, definitely finishing the run up Queenstown Hill with you boys. Yeah. Um, that's something that'll be etched in my memory. Um, I've obviously got a photo of it on my desk, but yeah, to see you boys get up that hill and um, to sort of enjoy it together was cool, a real cool experience. You got a good background story for that hill though, because you, well, tell us about that, because I know that that hill was not just like any old hill in Queenstown because you, you've been there before. Yeah, yeah, I've been there before, before and um, done a few runs up there and uh, I knew it would be a, a big curveball for, the, for you boys to do at the end of uh, Arthur's Peak hike. So um, it was sort of always in the back of my mind that we could do that. But I sort of even thought, you know, would, would you boys get up there? But getting back to that mental stuff, like, yeah, just to see you get up there, three and a half k straight up, um, and especially when you didn't know how far, it, I'd never told you how far it was going to be, it was probably the most rewarding thing to see, you just keep going. Yeah, yeah. that was, yeah, that was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that thing was a joke, especially the last section. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. It was like a, a vertical, 45 yeah. degree vertical. Yeah. Um, and then just lastly, mate, um, some of your personal goals for going forward for the club, for yourself, once you, you know, do you see yourself in this role forevermore or do you have other, other goals uh, you want to strive for? No, I just want to see, I'm a Gold Coaster. I grew up in Tweed. Um, I've just got a lot of passion and love for the club. Um, I've been here once before. I'm back again. And so I just want to see us do well. And I want to see, as I said, I've got a lot of love for the group. So I just want to see the group succeed and 
uh, I want to play a small part in that. So that's probably my the biggest passion moving forward long term. Beautiful, mate. I like it. All right. Thanks for coming on Two Talks. Hopefully, cool. it wasn't too bad for you, mate. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, Ridge. <laughs>